Hi, this is Anne Marie Gaddy from Classic Movie Hub, and I'm thrilled to be here today with Victoria Riskin, who is the daughter of actress Fay Ray, yes, that would be King Kong's Fay Ray, and screenwriter Robert Riskin, who penned some of the most beloved classics. Uh, it happened one night. Uh, meet John Doe, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, you can't take it with you. So we're here today to talk about Victoria's new book, Fay Ray and Robert Riskin, a Hollywood memoir. Now your parents, you know, the book, clearly your parents met a little later on in their lives, so the, the book really, <coughs> you know, parallels both of their lives. And right. then they meet essentially for the first time on Christmas Eve of 1940, mm -hmm. and right. then they marry in August 1942. But before that, your father was a ladies' man, That's right? You true. mentioned he dated Carol Lombard, Glenda Farrell. Mm -hmm. Your mom, though, really, I think, longed for a partner, a family, a home, and, and I don't think she found that happily, let's say, right. with her first husband, John Monk Saunders, who's a uh, screenwriter as well, right. or with playwright Clifford Odets. So my mother uh, loved writers, as mm -hmm. you could tell she fell in love and married John Monk Saunders, who was a very talented writer. And when that marriage didn't work out, she uh, became very uh, deeply devoted to Clifford mm -hmm. Odets, who was an extraordinary playwright and lionized in his era as the voice of the people. And she loved and admired him. In her relationships with each of those men, she she really wanted to find that intimacy and closeness. She wanted to give to them. She was a very generous person. Mm -hmm. And those were disappointing relationships in the end. So it wasn't until she found my father mm -hmm. who was looking for the same thing, I think. Mm -hmm. He had stayed away from marriage because um, I think he, he felt, well, first of all, I don't think he'd found the right person. He mm -hmm. was cautious. Mm -hmm. He loved the women he dated and he was marvelous and had great relationships with them, but I think he felt marriage could ruin the f sense of freedom and romance. His mm -hmm. father used to say that. His, my grandfather would say, you know, I love my wife, but marriage can ruin a romance. But mm -hmm. uh, he said, but you know, there's no other way of doing it. We kind of have this thing called marriage. <clears throat> also, my father's brother had had a bad marriage, and I think that made him doubly cautious. So. Mm -hmm. So it took my mother to, to land him. Yeah. You know, I think, uh, and and also they, they came together right after uh, the, when they finally got, really got together. It was mm -hmm. right after uh, Pearl Harbor and World War II broke out. I think that's a time when people start to think more deeply mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. feel a need for connection, and so the timing was kind of perfect. It mm -hmm. just threw them together in a. A really wonderful way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's you bring up the war. You know, another thing I loved about the book was that you brought historical context into it. So I learned so much. You talked about the birth of the the Screenwriters Guild and yeah. the blacklisting, and yeah. you talked about the World War II efforts. Now, your father was. Let's see if I can remember this. The founding head of the Overseas Film Division mm -hmm. of the Office of War Information. Very good, oh, very good. It. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> can you tell, I found this part of the book so fascinating. Can you tell us, like, wh what did your father do there? What was the purpose? So, um, when the war broke, even before the war, uh, the Office of War Information was sort of established under a different name, but the idea was that you could use the tools of communication to help win the war. So mm -hmm. whether it was pamphlets or whether it was documentaries or whether it was whatever uh, radio casts. And so FDR had set up this division. <clears throat> and when the, when the war broke out, it took a while before my father got this position with the Office of War Information. He was looking for a way to do his part. Mm -hmm. and. Um, the big question inside the the department, the Office of War Information, was should propaganda tell people how horrible Hitler was and mm -hmm. scare them, you know, and to try to convince people overseas that this is a bad man, or should propaganda simply tell the story of what's good about America in an indirect way so that people fall in love with America? Mm -hmm. So when my father came on board, he worked under, but uh, had his own division, but Robert Sherwood, the great playwright, mm -hmm. 
and he, they both felt strongly the way to win the hearts and minds of people overseas was just to tell little simple stories about America. Mm -hmm. And so my father put together an enormous team of people and they made 26 short films and he also was charged with distributing Hollywood films overseas and he, mm -hmm. he selected them carefully and he literally almost on the backs of trucks mm -hmm. went across North mm -hmm. Africa and up through Sicily. It's one of the great untold stories mm -hmm. of, of Hollywood history and World War II and the capacity to influence. So, so many of them were very, were delightful. For example, there's one about the Empire State Building. Mm -hmm. And it's a simple little film where uh, the main character is the guy who washes the windows. And he talks about coming to work every day and he climbs outside a window and he scaffolds up and down, himself up and down, almost like a Buster Keaton character. Mm -hmm. And it's just telling his little story. But you see the skyline of New York mm -hmm. and it's awesome. And you see this beautiful building. So subtly it's saying there are great things in America. And maybe mm -hmm. you want to think about us in a different way. Mm -hmm. And those were the films that it was like a film invasion of, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. Europe as mm -hmm. the army of uh, liberation was mm -hmm. coming through falling yeah. behind Eisenhower. And so that was his charge. It was a huge charge and he did a spectacular amazing. job. Amazing. And I never knew any of that. I mean, I knew about the films, but I really never knew yeah. what the real purpose was and how they used them. I found mm -hmm. it so interesting. So, you know, your father's screenplays are known for championing the every man, like mm -hmm. for celebrating the every man. Right. But, you know, then it's really echoed in his real life because, you know, what he did, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it, helping with the unions and, mm -hmm. and going off to London to help with the war efforts. So what do you think it was about your father's personality that made him so yeah. acutely aware of this, of not only the struggles of the every man, but the heroism of just the every man? That was his theme time and time again, that it's the common guy is basically a good, decent mm -hmm. person. And if, if there's a crisis, he'll chip in and he'll do great. There's a great uh, uh, scene when in Meet John Doe, Gary mm -hmm. Cooper is, is saying it's, it's the John Doe's of the mm -hmm. world who've, who built the world. They built the pyramids. They built right. <laughs> this was so deeply embedded in his DNA and, mm -hmm. and who he was as a person, this great respect for, for everyone. You even see it in his films because the secondary characters often do little oddball things and it's mm -hmm. like he's giving them their little moment in the sun, right? So, so I've wondered, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. you know, how did he mm -hmm. get that idea or how was that baked in? He came from a very secure family. He had a very, his mother was very loving, funny. His father was kind of an armchair philosopher with a heavy Russian accent, you know, mm -hmm. and they had left uh, Russia, or Belarus actually, to come to America. It was that period of enlightenment, what they say in, in the Yiddish tradition, Jewish tradition, tekun olam, hmm. that you have a responsibility to care for others hmm. and to make the world a better place. And I think that's, that's where his parents believed, and I think it was just, he, he learned that from the time he was young. and, and it resonated with him as a little being, as a person, mm -hmm. that that was kind of his charge, not in a heavy-handed way to tell people how to run their mm -hmm. lives, but to look after and care for one another and mm -hmm. to not um, be pulled into tribalism. And it's a message, mm -hmm. I think, that's so meaningful for today where we are at the effect and in the grasp of this combat, this mm -hmm. tribalistic kind of combat when we really have so much more in common mm -hmm. with each other, we certainly do. if we just get to know each other and look, care for one another. And, mm -hmm. and that's, I, I, I think that's one of the lessons I've learned from him. I feel mm -hmm. that strongly too. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I, um, I really appreciate that, that in mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could, you know, it's funny, I, I keep thinking when you were putting together the book, like sitting in an attic, and look <coughs> at, attic and looking at pictures, and there's so many wonderful pictures in the book, so many wonderful 
letters in the book. Um, when you were going through that, I imagine it was kind of heartwarming, you mm -hmm. know, reminiscing. Is, is there anything special, any other special stories you want to share with us? Well, it was like me. I felt like I was a detective. Did you, <laughs> you, did you ever have that experience when you were little of going in your mother's drawers? You never did that. No, I never did. Never well, did? I don't remember I can't if I did. You never did that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, maybe I did. I used to go into my mother's really? drawer. Yeah, especially her makeup drawer. I used to look at all this stuff, you know. So I felt a oh. little bit at first like mm -hmm. I was doing something maybe I shouldn't be doing. Okay. You know that mm -hmm. feeling. Mm -hmm. But of course, I think uh, just the opposite today. My mother would be quite happy with mm -hmm. this yeah. journey I've been on. I found their love letters. That was just an oh, eye opener gosh, for me. I can't even imagine. And I knew they were there, and I would start to try to read them, uh, and then it would be too emotional for me sure. because I wanted them to be together again. Yeah. I felt like I was in a movie, and I wanted to have a new ending, mm. <laughs> and I wanted them to be together. So finally, I had to just put aside my, my own emotions about it. I had a young woman, it, my father's handwriting was very tiny and slanted. And so I had a young woman transcribe all of them. There were mm -hmm. over 100. Wow. That's a lot. There were uh, telegrams and letters, sometimes long letters, sometimes just three or four little lines. Mm -hmm. And his, his affection for her and for life and his concern about the world just poured out onto these pages. And I just thought, I, I was just like a warm bath mm -hmm. of, of affection and love for her, for the world, for his children, and, that, and also uh, from overseas when he was there and his, his sense of what was going on during mm -hmm. the war and his observations about people and human nature. Yeah. They were quite spectacular mm -hmm. and it was, uh, they were gems and I'm so glad I, if I hadn't done this book, I, I don't know if I would have taken the time. I think it was still, you know, I, I was able to push myself mm -hmm. to spend time with the, those letters. Yeah. Well, it was really wonderful. I mean, I mean, you gave us an inside look at everything, so it was really very special. Um, are there anything, maybe, anything you learned about them that might surprise us, delight us in your, in your investigative work? <coughs> um, well, I certainly took delight in their sense of humor, mm -hmm. uh, my, my father's wit. I think, um, I don't know, so many things come to mind. I, I think one of the little, like, investigative things, sort of, I, I ref was reflecting this morning on, um, after my mother passed away, mm -hmm. I had to go through her things, and that wasn't easy. Of course, it isn't for anybody who's lost sure. a parent. And I opened her top drawer, and here were these little boxes. One was with safety pins of different sizes. One was a box of, of buttons that had lost their, their parentage, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. One was a box with, when she shortened her dresses, there'd be a little piece of fabric that would be left over. And, well, and I looked in there, and here's a woman who, who who lived the most glamorous life at the height of her career. Mm -hmm. and But still, you know, these little things that she saved because she grew up poor mm -hmm. and that you might need. You might need that safety pin. You might need that little piece of... She was not a hoarder. It was all very tidy. She was very organized. Mm -hmm. But still, I, I think it was a reflection of... Um, never throwing anything away, sort of appreciating little bits and pieces mm -hmm. of things. I found lots of photographs. Um, UC, mm -hmm. USC has an amazing collection. Okay. Uh, so anybody wants to do We can go it? see it. Yes. Oh, that's great. So you you had see. so many in the book, too, which yes. is wonderful. It was hard to choose. Mm -hmm. I had to mm -hmm. <laughs> struggle with which pictures to include. But mm -hmm. I wanted people to have sort of a little visual of the different yeah. parts of their lives and um, and the movies that they made. Mm -hmm. I think they felt very blessed to be in the motion picture business mm -hmm. in the 1930s when Hollywood was one big happy fam well not happy family but it was a family mm -hmm. and they they played together they had fun it was uh, Los Angeles was an easy going town mm -hmm. 
they played tricks on the moguls, you know. <laughs> There's some of that in the book yep, that you'll yep. read. Yep. And um, yeah, it was a great time in Hollywood history. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who follow it, I don't blame you. I, I wish I could turn it's the clock back. So fascinating, isn't it? And land in that same place. Mm -hmm. And I had just a little bit out as a child, you know, yeah. that sense of growing up and in a warm and friendly and playful place. Mm -hmm. It was some great stories, and we won't go into them all, but about your neighbors and little things. Right. It was really fun to read. Um, so for our fans, I mean, many of them are so familiar with the work of your parents, but uh -huh. maybe some aren't. Uh -huh. Would Do you have any films you'd want to recommend, whether they're must-sees or hidden gems or personal mm -hmm. favorites? Well, that's a tough question, because mm -hmm. I like so many of them, and especially, uh, you know, I. I I don't know if, uh, how many people are familiar with Magic Town, which is the film my father mm -hmm. made after World War II, and mm -hmm. uh, with Jane Wyman and um, um, Jimmy Stewart. Uh, I, I sort of hearken back to that one because mm -hmm. uh, it was, he set up his own company and he mm -hmm. made the film. Um, but it, it, again, it's, it was about a pollster who comes to a little town and mm -hmm. it's the perfect town, has the perfect demographic. Mm -hmm. And so he wants to find out what people think so he can predict who's going to win the election. But of course, mm -hmm. when he comes to town, every the demographic right. gets changed because mm -hmm. he, he, it was quite an inventive story. But I think for my father, I love Platinum Blonde, which is oh, perhaps less famous. Mm -hmm. But the main character has so many little um, sidebars and witticisms and charming mannerisms that were exactly like my father. Oh. So I get to see him in action. Now he's mm -hmm. a little diffident, but witty, and um, and it was one of the early screwball comedies, mm -hmm. which I think he mm -hmm. really p made a significant contribution to Absolutely. that whole idea. From my mother, there are these little hidden gems like um, behind the makeup. Did you ever hear of this one? Hmm, I've so never I, seen it. I'm, I'm hoping to stump to. you. <laughs> yeah, I think you just did. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> With William Holden. It was an early Fay okay. William Holden film. And um, uh, I, I just was, I could see it was sort of the transition from her just being the, 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 the waif in the wedding march uh -huh. to having a little bit of a part she could play and mm -hmm. some complications. And then I liked her in The Clairvoyant with um, um, Claude Dane, Claude Rains, okay. which was an English film. These okay. are just little oddball Excellent. films, but Brilliant. I think partly the Claude Rains film, uh, The Clairvoyant, is about a, um, a troubled marriage, and her marriage was troubled at the mm -hmm. time. So I sort of look at that through the lens of what was going mm -hmm. on for her personally. Oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah, okay. those are... You. Something for fans to look for if they haven't yeah. seen them. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to wind up with one question. You kind of alluded to this before, but it's, you know, I would love to know what some of the guiding principles were that you got from your parents that helped mm. you make who you are today. I really do believe in this idea that if we can stop demonizing each other mm -hmm. and stop being tribal and really get to know the other guy or the other woman or mm -hmm. whoever it is um, that we have more in common than we have uh, that separates us. Mm -hmm. That we are so much at the effect of people who manipulate public opinion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for their own gain. Uh, and I'm a big believer in universal principles. It's I think mm -hmm. came from them, particularly my father who did believe that the United Nations could be a place where you could come together and solve problems. And mm -hmm. one of his short films was about that during World War II. I've been involved in the human rights movement for many years. Mm -hmm. I just think we have to treat each other kindly mm -hmm. and, and respect each other's rights. Um, and it doesn't matter who you are or where you are. And understand that we're all struggling and mm -hmm. can't we pitch in and help each other because we're all in this together really mm -hmm. in the end. And so that's kind of influenced how I look at the world mm -hmm. and I don't think anything's going to make me into a cynic. I'll always be an optimist. Oh, that's good. 
Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so thank you. That is a lovely guiding principle. And thank you. Um, I want to thank you really for, for spending time with us today, mm. um, for answering our questions. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Oh, and I hope we chat again you. someday. I do too. Thank you so <laughs> thank much. You. It's been terrific. <laughs> so <laughs> this is Anne Marie Gaddy for Classic Movie Hub with Victoria Riskin, author of the new book. Faye Ray and Robert Riskin, a Hollywood memoir. Fascinating read. I highly recommend it.